We are live. Meow, 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 meow. You know who? Do you know who says that? Whose intro that is? Uh, Full House. No. No. Oh. That's the intro from the guy that that uh, always MCs the UFC fights. I can't remember his name. I couldn't have been more wrong. Yeah, you were. Vietnam. No, no, no. Bad. That's. I like that show. <laughs> it's a good show. Yeah. Doesn't mean you did it well though. Oh. No, I didn't try. Yeah, you're right. That's not wrong. Ouch. I had my levels a little too high on that one. I feel bad. All right, this is the gadget spot where we talk about gadget tech and video games, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and introduce the panel now. Unless anyone else has anything they want to add? No? Okay. Oh, and introduce yourself. Ha! Hey, my one. Jaren just put me down. What? And I'll just introduce put myself. Put you down? You do so well yourself putting yourself down. Yeah, but it hurts more than you do it, Jaren. <laughs> Follow me on Twitter at Techno or whatever. Who cares? Yeah, who cares? <laughs> wow. No games. No games this last two weeks? I, I tried to turn on Super Smash. However, you played some Smash with us today. I did play. That's the most game we've done, I, and I and I won. And you won a game. All right, right story time. When James got here, he saw us playing Smash. He's like, I am the best <laughs> Smash Brothers player ever. I will beat all of you two to one. And, and uh, then he said, I'll bet $10. Yeah, and do you know what happened? I Owen, won. Owen beat all of us. I won, and you need to understand what and that James means. And James got last place. <laughs> you need to understand what that means when it says Owen won. Because that's a thing. That's not a normal win. That's like like saying, oh, somebody of, you know, moderate skill. No, I have zero smash skill. Man, what did your parents do to you? <sighs> and anyway. it's, it's almost an anagram, too. O and one. <laughs> yeah. Isn't you that could weird? put that into one sentence. <laughs> In fact, that's what I'll tweet out. An almost anagram. Almost anagram. There Jaren. Hey, this is Jaren. You can find me on Twitter at Jaren. I'm one of those cool people who has their first name on Twitter. Lucky. Yeah. I'm going to find at Owen and see if I can Sorry. buy it for $20. Because that's what they offered you, isn't it? Uh, no, it was 50 I thought. It might have been 100 okay. Zero to 100 Okay. Wow. In, in that range. But it was not worth it. That's what I need. Yeah. Uh, what I, did you say your sellout would be for that? A couple thousand. Oh. Uh, yeah. Mine is one GPU. <laughs> one old GPU. <laughs> Down just a little bit. Uh, anyway, I have been playing some games. I got Metro. Metro Exodus. Exodus. I, I had to because it is the best implementation for ray tracing out there right now. Um, it really is. And DLSS. And DLSS. It's glorious. It is. The, the graphics in that game are so dang good that where they kind of scrimped on graphics, it really stands out and looks horrible. S- is scrimped a word? <laughs> sure. Cool. Yeah. Skimped? Scrimped? Skimped. I think Skimped. scrimped works. I yeah. think it works. You're in finance, so you get to do whatever you want. So like every once in a while, there's this <laughs> texture that isn't high res. And it's like, oh, this is a video game. I think part of that is bugs, though. Honestly, I think that they have some textures that just don't load properly. Because hmm. mm-hmm. uh, I played a few parts. I was like, oh, how would they miss the texture right next to the good <laughs> texture? Have it be bad kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, it's <laughs> weird. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> last episode, we, we went on about DLSS looking like... Garbage. Like poop. Uh, like Vaseline smeared over your eyes. Uh, but Metro, they put out a patch for A Games. They put out a patch, and it's sharp now. I, I wouldn't say it looks exactly like 4K. I'd probably say slightly above 1800p. But it looks good, and it saves a lot of resources on your system, and I couldn't be happier. Did you already say that what system you're playing it on? The PC. Oh. Yep. And uh, ray tracing at high instead of ultra. There's, I can't really tell the difference, but I get almost 60 FPS the majority of the time nice yeah it's it's a wonderful game um and i it feels like i played something else but uh oh yeah battlefront 2 that's my that's my main go-to and apex legends i've heard that that's the best multiplayer game since uh halo i've had quite, uh, quite a bit of fun i don't know if i'd say that because it's kind of so different than halo it's hard to say they're the same kind of multiplayer game hmm. And shout out to the big jerk bag who stole all my power ups when I specifically called them down with my own, you know, oh, superpower. Yeah, I, I was the healing lifeline. I was yeah. lifeline called down like the uh, ship that brings down all the good loot. It's a, he, both times I did it twice. <laughs> both times in the game, he ran up, stole my gear. No left. way. Well, I, I I almost said something nasty to him. What? Do you remember what his username is? I don't. You should block him. But that is totally rude, and if you listen to this podcast, I don't like you, and I don't care if you know it. But when you're playing as Lifeline, you get first dibs. Exactly. That's just how it works. You Uh called down a care package, so you get first dibs, and the rest of the team gets whatever you don't want. Truth. 
you know, because there's usually at least two good items in there. Sometimes all three are good. Yeah. So, you know, and, and also when you're lifeline, don't bogart everything either. You know, leave some stuff for your yeah. for your teammates. But that game's great. You guys should give it a chance if you haven't yet. It's free and it doesn't feel free because it's, it's really good. It's way good. Yep. So what do they what do you actually pay for in that game? Probably like skins and cosmetics, stuff. Yeah. Cosmetics. Cosmetics. Yeah. I'll bet you money that they within the next six months they probably introduce like a battle pass, mm. like what Fortnite has. Lame. Oh, I think it'd be all right. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> you can unlock new characters, but the only thing the I'm ba- happy with the six characters that are already available. Yeah, the only thing the battle pass does is it gives you more opportunities to unlock skins and stuff. Are we are we live oh, right cool. now? Yeah, one hundred percent. That's why I had said the we are live. Oh, intro. Oh, that's nice. Although when you said that, we might not have actually been live. It has to validate the stream before and uh, the stream live now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, right now so we've been live for five minutes and fifty-seven seconds. Do we have any comments on there? Did you tweet that <laughs> I out? Been, I, I'm not going to watch comments. I can't. <laughs> I, I can't. I can't burned switch. Oh. And, no, it's too much to concentrate on. <laughs> Did we tweet that out? You have out? two devices over there. Uh, if you want to tweet it out, that'd be great. I t- I put it on Facebook earlier on this evening. That oh, nice. We're going to be live right in a little bit. Cool. And to subscribe. So I think that this might be something we do a little bit more. Can I do my intro? Yeah, yeah. James. Hey, guys. What's up? It's James. Pew, 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 pew. Uh, you can catch me on Twitter at JDD Jensen. JDD is for ADD. Or you can catch me on nowhere else because I don't have time to do anything. Well, there you go. Ooh, I'm James. I'm Owen. I'm you're so raising, busy all the time. Woo. You're raising a baby. How it? Yep. That's right. Yeah, I am. Um, she's the best, and I love her. And I'm not saying that out of Stockholm Syndrome. She's really the best. What do you rate her? What? What do you rate her? Oh, I thought you said, will you It's rate a trick. Her? Nope. Do it. Oh, out of, she's 10 out of 10. Easy. Dang it. Easy. Oh, she's 10 out that. of 10. Although, that, that's the right answer, James. Yeah. Mm, I should have done that before. <laughs> that being said, <laughs> that being said, I do understand Stockholm Syndrome uh, completely but different, and I understand abusive relationships. Well, I mean, a baby's cuteness is its only natural Defense, defense mechanism you know, from you leaving me. it at a mall. Exactly. They, that's what it uses to snare you in, just like a kitten. You know, you love a kitten because it's so cute. Yeah, it's and like a baby. Had you have gotten it as a cat, I'm sure there are some people that adopt it as a cat. Yeah. And kudos to those people. Those well, people are selfless. That's the thing. Cats can also be cute. It doesn't have to be a kitten. They for a can, little, but for a little man, while. They're mean. For a little while. Until they start pooping in your shoes. Yeah. Is that what uh, is that what your cats do? No. no? How have they reacted yet. to the baby? They hate her. <laughs> they hate we, the lack of attention that you give them now, right? Yeah. I used to sleep with our bedroom door open, but now we have to sleep with all the doors closed because we're afraid that they're going to come and sit on a face mm-hmm. in a house. They don't, house. Not even your babies. It could be yours. Uh-huh. Any, you know what? Any face. We've had enough of James. Good has put on a little bit of baby weight. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, you know what? Enough of James. I'm gonna. He's going out tonight. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna smother him out tonight. One hundred percent. He's going to. That's funny. Uh, but that being said, uh, go check us uh, out on our on our webpage, uh, the Gadget Spot. It's great. The Gadget Spot dot net. Oh yeah, the Gadget Spot dot net, which I accidentally put it. Gadget or is it just no? Ga- it's just Gadget Spot. Gadget Spot. Net. Sorry. That's okay. And I, I, if you're catching this live stream right now on YouTube, which most likely you're not. Hi mom. And you see in the description, I accidentally put dot com. It's actually dot net. That's my bad. I'll get it changed. <laughs> yeah, we'll fix it. But that Ain't being no said, thing. what have you been playing? Oh, nothing but Super Smash in Tetris 99. Which mm. you lost in. What's that? Which you lost in. He's, in Tetris 99? No, no. He's, he's, he's bringing up the Smash again. Yep, you lost. Oh, I wasn't ready. <laughs> I mean, that's easy. I wasn't ready. <laughs> he, was, he, was, his, he was still in work mode putting all these cameras and, up. And Owen was... I mean, what day of his life has look he at Owen. ever he been ready? He looks like he's ready for anything. Anytime. Mainly the apocalypse or to try to steal a neural, uh, a, a squirrel's nut collection. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever you need, uh, you come to me in the I, apocalypse. I feel like you look like you would be able to distribute the paper for fruit roll-ups. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what that Mainly. means. Mainly. I don't know either. But it's plastic. Okay. Yeah. No, it's paper. On a fruit roll-up? Yeah. It's plastic. Is it plastic? Oh, you're yeah. talking about fruit by the foot. Oh, yeah. Fruit by the foot is paper. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never. Don't give it. Don't give that to him. He said fruit roll up, oh, and that, he was wrong that's, again. That's what I you said. You lost at Smash Brothers, and now you're wrong about fruit roll up. Wow. You want to know what my He's favorite thing is? Harsh. Is now that we're live and we actually have a little bit of like a switcher camera, everybody can see how mean to me you are being. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, and, nice. and the facial expression, and people will realize I'm finally being sarcastic. Uh, yeah, we don't want that. Will they though? No, your <laughs> hair kind of covers up your sarcasm. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Too much hair. <laughs> Can't tell if he's sarcastic. Uh, he just, but go check is out he our just, just beautiful, or is he sarcastic? Go check out our YouTube Maybe page. Both. Oh my gosh! Really? <laughs> <laughs> you can. Ha- how yeah. many times a day do you? How, I'm going to do this. How many times a day do you do this? 
Uh, a lot, actually. Would you Would you give one to this camera right here? <laughs> well, I got to really take quick? my headphones off. Okay. All right. Here we go. Okay, he's going to take his headphones off. Ugh. You kind of no. look like the lead yeah, singer. Put him back on. Ah, it's getting creepier. <laughs> you kind of look like Tyson Ritter a little bit, the lead singer Ooh. from uh, All American Rejects. Back in their heyday, not now. Go, Jaron. All right. But that being said, <laughs> if you want to check us out, subscribe to us on YouTube. Every two weeks, we might be doing this live if it goes good today. But you know who goes on YouTube a lot, and it's our host. His name is Tony. I do go on YouTube a lot, multiple times a day, hmm. to usually to see if Digital Foundry has put up any videos. Oh. I don't love you get, that don't you get notified? I do, okay. but I still check. Sometimes you just check because you're yeah. like, <laughs> well, I mean, there's other channels that I subscribe to that I don't get notifications uh, from, like Linus and and uh, Hardware Canucks, those crazy Canucks. I understand oh, that. Sometimes is that I go, Canadian? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sometimes I go places just to see if maybe I missed it. See? I'm just like, yeah. oh, still there. Maybe I missed a George R. R. Martin book update. <laughs> just nope. kidding, I hate you, that guy. You sure didn't, because he doesn't update <laughs> no, anything. Doesn't. Uh, let's see. Oops. Check me out on Twitter at Quad T Tony, or every week on The Geek Show, or every other week on The Gadget Spot wing, right wing, here. Wing, gadget Spot. Uh, Gaming-wise, I have been playing... Um, what did I play? I always go back to my old faithful Destiny 2. Uh, um, you got to drop that. No someday. way. I love it. Love it. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, let's see, I talked about beating Shadow of the Tomb Raider last time. Oh, I started trying to get into Red Dead Redemption 2. Tried? I, I gave it a good old college effort. I mean... Isn't it hard to do? It's, it's hard to get into that game. I heard it's tedious. It's a tedious game. Yeah. Now, the game is gorgeous, and the setting is gorgeous and interesting, but everything's so spread out, which I guess is realistic to the old West days. I don't want realism. I want fun. That's the problem. That's exactly what it is. You're either a cowboy simulator, which is boring 90% of the time, 10% it's exciting, but 90% of the time it's boring. 100% of the time it's gorgeous and it runs really well. The the graphics are great, but like, but yeah, it's I, I don't want to be bored 90% of the time and having fun 10%. Of, even Skyrim didn't have that bad of a ratio. Skyrim was like bored half the time, engaged <laughs> half the time. But I don't know. I'll keep plugging along at it, I guess. It's just, it's hard. I, I, is there a payout to grinding and being tedious? Do well, you get something better that, that's if you the, do it that way? Or is it by design? That's the crappy part is I've read a few articles that say that it doesn't get better. Like people that have played all the way through the game waiting for that hook. And just it never Nothing. happened. So if my if I set my three year old to play it and she ignored everything and just ran through the game and did whatever random, she could have somewhat of the same experience. Pretty close. Yeah. At the end, as somebody who spent twenty hours shaving and getting coffee and doing all the stuff. That's the thing is, yeah, the uh, tedious day to day stuff that you have to do, and I agree with it. Like I don't, I don't. Why should I have to go buy kill a bunch of meat and bring it back to the camp? Why isn't anyone else killing meat and bringing it back to the camp? You there. Why Why do I have to organize the have first ever, aid supplies? Have you, have you ever... Um, uh, this is the same problem I had. I'm just going to roll over that, James, because you didn't get anywhere. No. <laughs> have you ever heard of the parable about the fish? Teach a man to fish? Yeah, you've yep. heard of it. Yeah. Okay. So this is teaching you to be... So this is actually preparing you for an actual... To be a cowboy, I guess? To be an actual zombie apocalypse. Isn't, isn't this some sort of... No, it's just Old West. <laughs> okay, so just There's per- no, time travel. It's preparing you for time travel. Yes, because there is absolutely no... Hmm. And this this is hard for me in a lot of games. There is no supernatural hook whatsoever. Because I'm a big sci-fi fantasy geek. So is this just like Cowboy Sim? Just like Cowboy Sim. It is a cowboy simulator. What? And... Okay. You know, this is the same problem I had with State of Decay 2. When you get State of Decay 2, you start playing it, you realize your home base has to be babysat. And it's not, uh, don't get me wrong, Red Dead Redemption 2 doesn't have nearly the same level of frustration that State of Decay 2 had with babysitting the settlement. But still, it's there's just tedious stuff and not enough fun stuff. But anyway... Uh, I've also been playing, I'm, I think I'm about halfway through what remains of Edith Finch and that game is crazy. That sounds like a book I wouldn't want to read. Yeah, exactly. But it's interesting. Um, I'm, it's, I'm kind of the target audience for that stuff though. I like walking Sims that tell a story. What's interesting is how you pronounce interesting. Interesting. Hmm. (laughs) Uh, do you guys play any of the walking Sims ever? Like, um, 
Like Firewatch? walking outside? Yeah, Firewatch is one or... Uh, What's a walking sim? You base, There's no action in the game, but you go from place to place and the story unfolds. And it's usually, if it's a good one, if it's well done... The so walking it, doesn't outpace the story. Like it's got a good ratio. So it's, read the book. It, it basically it's a it's a moving movie. Like yeah, it's a, like a first person movie is yeah. what it is for the most part. Hmm, that and doesn't sound like a game to me. It, it's that sounds it, like an assignment. Yeah, it's almost borderline like an art project a lot of the time. Uh, but some of them are really good. Like Firewatch was really good. But Darren, it looks Jaren beautiful. Mentioned. It's really pretty. Right. Uh, the story is really interesting so far, even though I have no idea what's going on. Um, but it still kind of pulled me in. Uh, so yeah, halfway through What Remains of Edith Finch, and I'm enjoying that quite a bit. Um, and then I spent a bunch of time in the last week or so benchmarking because... <laughs> because <laughs> because we called because it. Jaren was 100% right. And when Even he, the timing. When she, it was great. <laughs> he said, what did you say, Jaren, back in the day? I, I said, as soon as... Not when Metro Exodus comes out. As soon as the Digital Foundry video of oh. Metro Exodus comes out. Tony's going to buy a 2080 Ti. And he was right. And what happened? <laughs> I caved big time. Um, so what happened to your other two 1080s? I, I sold them. I actually got a pretty good price selling them. So <laughs> I'm not, I'm only out a couple hundred bucks to upgrade, which isn't too bad. Yeah, that's pretty good. To a single um, 2080? Yeah, to a single 2080. But interesting thing about all that is all the benchmarks I did, the synthetic benchmarks from 3D Mark, Time Spy, Fire Strike, stuff like that, definitely showed the 1080 Ti's as being more powerful. The two of them. Two of them, yeah, in SLI. Uh, but every game I benchmarked, now this might be a, an issue with I only benchmarked games that don't perform well under SLI. I'm not 100% certain of that, um, but I benchmarked, I did a comparison benchmarks with my 1080 single 1080s on SLI and the 2080 Ti afterwards. I did it on Far Cry 5, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, um, Metro Exodus, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Yeah, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And every single of those titles showed at least a 20% increase in frame rates uh, for the single 2080 Ti over a 1080 Ti SLI. To me, that says two TI. things. The 2080 Ti is awesome, and SLI is kind of a failure of technology. I think you're right, and I've always been a big advocate of SLI. Um, I think that probably the 9 and 10 generation of graphics cards earlier on in the 10 generation game makers and nvidia driver engineers spent more time making sli profiles for the bigger games i think they actually put more effort into that because now man most games are launching without sli profiles and if they do get it it's months down the road and by then everyone that wants to play the game usually already has yeah and so it's it's a really cool technology sli is super neat and it can scale almost 100% it just doesn't scale very well in games anymore, though. What game was it that you got twenty five hundred uh, the twenty five hundred frame rate? <laughs> oh, so I sent a screenshot of yeah. of a game that was getting twenty five hundred frames per second. <laughs> it was on the title page. Yeah. Um, what game was that? It was uh, PUBG. No, I can't Fortnite. Even remember. I can read the quote. Yeah. What is? It I say? see you gather before me, hungry, terrified. That's on the screenshot. Oh, it was Witcher Three. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 2500. Yeah. I was like, that's impressive. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I might have to get a 2080 Ti and maybe game on the Yeah, PC. so as, as soon as I loaded up an actual game, it was back to a normal frame rate. Yeah. But yeah, uh I I've I, you know, I basically echo the sentiments of Jaren's 2080 Ti review. It's a really neat piece of kit. It does what it says it does really well, and we're going to get to that a little bit more with the DLSS on Metro when we talk about it. Um uh, later in the podcast, but it is very expensive. And if you don't have a way to like upgrade by selling stuff, selling old graphics cards or something like that, and you're just making a straight up twelve or thirteen hundred dollar purchase out of pocket, that would be hard. It's probably too much to uh, too expensive to recommend to most to ninety nine percent of people. Jeffrey Kale says that the running simulator of uh, twenty eighteen and twenty nineteen is PUBG. <laughs> oh yeah, nah. that makes sense. Wah, wah. Um. Gosh, there was another there was another walking s simulator game that I wanted to mention that was super super good, and I can't remember what it was called. Gone Home. Gone Home was very good, but that's not the one. That, oh, the, the one that uh, that company made later that came out a couple like a year ago, Tacoma. Uh, that yeah. one's really good too. It takes place in a space station. Um, but no, there was one. It was about a little boy that you're trying to find. You're a detective, and you're trying to find this lost little boy in this little town or 
home settlement in a mine. I, it was really good, though. Oh, well, I guess it wasn't good enough for me to remember the name. But if, uh, if you know what I'm talking about, it's good. It's real good. Uh, all right. Uh, we need to do some emails and some Patreon. We'll start yeah. off with Patreon. Yep. Patreon. Patreon is a way for you, dear listener, to support our show if you like us. And if you don't like us, why are you listening? Ow. That's hey. a good question, though. <laughs> if you don't like it, why would you listen? Yeah. Uh, anyway, so if you tip $6 or more, we read your name on the show, and we thank you because you guys are awesome. Uh, so huge shout out and thank you to AJ Jasper, David Broshinsky, and Aaron Young. You are the light of our life. Thanks, guys. Uh, what is your favorite Disneyland ride? Um, oh, boy. Never been. It's a hard Just question. Kidding, I've been one time. Space Mountain. Probably Space Mountain. Yeah, it's, it's I'd awesome. Say the exit line as I'm leaving Disneyland Hey-o. at the end of the day because it's that. so crowded. But the line of the Indi- Indiana Jones ride, that is the awesomest line. That was pretty cool. That that one is broken so much, though. I like the Cars ride. It's never been broken for me. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cars ride's good, but it only lasts for like two minutes. Yeah, it's short. I've never and been on a Cars the li- ride. Not worth the line. I haven't been to Disneyland since I was 16. They've <laughs> added a lot. Uh, I know they have. <laughs> was California Adventure even there? Yeah, that was like the first year it was open. Holy so moly. if you count California Adventure, my favorite ride was the roller coaster at California Adventure. But if you're just doing Disneyland proper, probably the Space, Space Mountain. Mountain. Yeah. When I was there last year, they 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 themed it Star Wars themed. It oh, was, that would be way cool. Awesome. Well, now yeah. you can go to and you can stand next to Millennium Falcon. They've got yeah. a whole section of Star Wars. Galaxy's Edge. Yeah. Galaxy's, Galaxy's Edge, Edge. in opens, the summer. I was going to say that opens yeah. up this summer. So excited! It's, <laughs> it's like sixteen acres. It's huge. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I wish I could go this summer. Um. Anyway, still reading Patreon here. Oh, you yeah. guys forgot. Huge thank you to Peter Santone, Hardware, Adam Hecht, Ryan Baker, Aaron Faulkner. Jaron can be reasonable now. Play Spider Man. Okay, I'll take you up on that. That was actually the next game I was going to play. Uh, Adam Foote, Spencer Knowlton, Valentine. I can make Jaren say anything for six bucks. Boom. Ryan McQueen. I think we're finding that out. You know, a lot of people are changing their heads I almost now. donated to us for that very reason. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan McQueen, Michael Beck, Jeffrey Kale, Roger Allen, Beauregard, Brian Lee, and Conrad Southworth. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, Patreon backers. Uh, Beauregard. Uh, I got there, it. There it goes. <laughs> he got it in there. Uh, oh, an update to me in Austin's uh, Comic Con. We're not going to do that anymore. We're thinking about launching uh, Gadget Con twenty uh, twenty twenty one. What are you it, talking about? What we're going to do is we're going to we're going to we're going to uh-huh. buy an <laughs> island in the Bahamas, and we're going to we're going to hire a lot of influencers. Uh, Fire festival. On, this sounds what? like it was already done. Yeah. There's a lot. It was successful, wasn't it? Mm, yes, very. Yeah. Do don't, it. Don't, do I get a free ticket? Um, also, don't want. On. I'll give you a a band. Do I get to come for free? If you pay for the flight, thousand yep. thousand dollars okay. round trip. Don't what? don't watch any of those documentaries, James. Yeah. Documentaries was, on what? It was a success. It was good. <laughs> There's no lawsuit. <laughs> Continue. Uh, let's see. So uh, emails. Moving on to emails, and um, and you guys got the f- stuff that I forwarded to you from the website, right? Yeah. Yes, that's okay. what we have the emails yeah. from. Uh, should we? We'll save this stuff for the end of the emails. Um, so, who's our emails from? We got one from Nick Hatton. Uh, he's uh, he's correcting us from the last episode. Oh, what do we do wrong? That's my and I, 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 I seem to remember this, but I didn't know for sure, so I didn't want to say it. But he says, just wanted to point out the SpaceX internet satellites are planned to be much closer to the Earth than typical. They're claiming, Low orbit. Yeah. They're they're claiming similar latency to fiber. Wow. Yeah. Those aren't the ones that are like the, the weather balloons, are they? No, that's no. Project Loon. No, they, these are actual satellites that SpaceX are going to launch. If they could get latency like fiber, that would be amazing. Yeah. yeah. That would be their big money maker. Oh, right yeah. There. I'm you, just could, you could use uh, SpaceX to fund Tesla at that point. <laughs> maybe, that's what they're all, maybe that's what all of his other ventures are for, <laughs> is just to fund Tesla yeah. to finish that. Can you imagine if there was a bunch of balloons in the sky? We'd be living in a steampunk universe. That'd be awesome. Ooh. And then you everybody gotta go would watch, paint uh, figurines. you got to go watch <laughs> WALL-E. You know when they all the, all the satellites are around the Earth like a... Like a like a bubble, yeah. Like a garbage dump, yeah. A garbage bubble. <laughs> it's pretty good. I swear we're not that far away from exactly. That. They've wow. already there's already been issues and, and discussions with space garbage. Yeah, there's a few companies out there. I can't remember any names off the top of my head, but they're specializing in trying to create uh, devices that go up and collect old broken satellites right. and bring because them back down to Earth. There's, they don't know what to like the space station can be at risk because like even a bolt or something from like an old could device be a huge problem is like a bullet to yeah. that thing. So. 
Anyway, you isn't remember it when- crazy that that bolt is just falling? That's all it's doing is just falling, man. Yep. In in orbit. In orbit. Do you remember so, uh, it was really a couple falling. years ago, China exploded a satellite up there. Do you remember that? They lost oh, control yeah. of it. It decayed. The, and the, and then they blew it up. Yeah. And everyone was pissed because of all the debris that created. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, we got another email from James. Any relation, James? Is this What's the one the he forwarded name? us? It doesn't say, it doesn't have a last name. Yeah, it might have looked like it's from me because I might have forwarded it to us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, it is. no it's, it's from somebody named James. He oh, says, cool. hello everyone, I have a time travel question for you guys. <laughs> if you could go back in time to the early 1990s, mm-hmm. huh, I've been there, let's say around the NES era, and mm. you took your Switch with you and some games, how do you think people would react to seeing the Switch and the games that you would show them? It would... I think I'd is get there, robbed is there more really to, quick. Is there more to that question or is that the end of the question? No, no. Also, if Nintendo at the same time happened to catch on to this, what do you think they might do and say? I've always wondered this myself. Thanks and keep up the good work. People would lose their freaking minds if, if they knew if they liked video games. They would worship us. Yeah. <laughs> Arthur C. Clarke, right? <laughs> Pro- problem any, is... It say, what's the quote? Any advanced, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. magic. Yep. P- problem is we'd have to be sure to bring... Um, you got to bring the, a the, charger. The correct, the, the correct cables to hook it up to TVs back yep. then. Uh, so you would need a... Um, USB-C to, to... Well, you would red, need that for a switch. RCA. Yeah, red, yellow, white. Yeah. I don't even think they make a cable like that. I don't think so. They make it. They make a digital. They make like an HDMI to RCA, like a RGB, converter, a little converter, a little box. converter box. Oh. I have a USB C to HDMI <laughs> around here you somewhere. Have to do that. In the in the nineties, they would look at HDMI and be like, "What is that? Like, is this <laughs> live TV? I feel like I'm standing." Of course, the TVs couldn't do that. And then. they'd be like, yeah. "Wow, you guys have one standard for video." And then we'd hang our heads down in shame and say, "No, no. That, that never." <laughs> and maybe we could fix that. We have know? at least four or five. So many things I want to deal with if I had time travel. And I guess all these are secondary because I would be very selfish at first. I would not. I would. <laughs> first, you would invest some money in first some I'd invest specific in, companies. First, I'd invest in Yahoo. Then I would uninvest in Yahoo. <laughs> you dump it. Then I would invest in Google. Then you, then you have to time and travel twice. I know. I just got to do it twice. I, I No, I just have to set an expiration for my fund. Google tanks Oh, there here. you go. Yeah. And then you'd be like, let me introduce you to avocados. Yeah. Seriously. On toast. Millennials <laughs> will love this. <laughs> What's a millennial? <laughs> They'll be like, what? I've thought of this question before, though, but with smartphones. Like, I've thought of that oh, with uh, yeah. Steve Jobs. Yeah. Bring, Sorry. Bringing well, Steve Jobs back in time? No, no, no. Like, bringing, like, the him. modern iPhone to, like, Steve Jobs, like, what he would say. Yeah. This he is would, what you've become, Steve. He this would, is the legacy. This is bed. the bloatware that you're going to put on yeah. it, Steve. He would complain because the screen's too big. Yeah. I can't hold <laughs> if it I were to, my tiny hands. I could just go to Steve <laughs> and be like, go to the doctor. And wear some shoes every now and then, buddy. <laughs> Come on. Hey, hey, hey. Update. We got two people watching our live stream. Oh, yeah. Woo! At I'm, one point, we had I'm, six. I'm so. not one of them. I'm not one of them. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so there's time. two outside Actual people. Actual people. I probably know one of them. Do we have any more uh, emails? Do you know Mitchell? Nope. That's it. No. Uh, that's my son, probably. So, oh, yeah. Mitchell Owen. Uh, he, he, whatever your yeah. last name is. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. So, uh, <laughs> he's like James. James finally brought the uh, Australian fan. You're welcome. I forget his name off the top of my head. The stuff that he Is ordered his name for on us. it. Ooh, I, I don't be. know if I'm going to try that. I don't know if I can handle that. With no, Is there a, a thank you note inside? With a gluten-free cracker. I don't know if I can handle it's that. It's the gluten-free cracker that's a break. That breaker is for offensive. Me. No, is no. it though? It's offensive that it exists. Someone's is got, it though? Are you looking up his uh, email, Jaren? Was it Peter Santone? Maybe. How many Australian uh, people do we have that actually listen to us? Can't you just search for like Tim Tams? Tim Tam Slam. So he had us uh, sent. He sent to us um, a couple of Australian delicacies, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna try those out now. Uh, I, I, I've had Tim Tams before, and they are freaking delicious. Don't tell my wife I'm eating these because I'm not going to mark it on my Weight Watchers app. Hold on. Let me send her the <laughs> We're stream. We're live. <laughs> oh, crap. Yeah, you're screwed. <laughs> oh, man. They smell so good. What oh. are what are they? Just just chocolate-covered cookie they look like, things? They look like Keebler cookies. Oh, they're better. How? Because they're from Australia? Try one. They're delicious, dude. They All right. So you, we'll have a Tim Tam now, and then we'll try some Vegemite on a gluten-free cracker. Right. I'll probably take a bite of this and save it so that when I have a Vegemite... We have a whole box of them. Oh, yeah, that's true. I'll have more than one. I'm, I'm oh, not man, a, you're so good. I'm not on any type of stupid yeah. diet. I was right. It was Peter Santone. Peter Santone. Thanks, Peter. Oh, that man. is a true Australian name right there. Tim Tams. 
I love Tim Tom. No. Oh, nom, 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 nom. All right. And he gave us, I didn't know this came in a squirt tube. Vegemite. That makes it so much more appealing. I know. Do we read the ingredients for that? What is Vegemite? B vitamins for vitality. Mm. Wait, wait. It's just B vitamins in a squeeze tube? Nope. I just had a baby. Do I need more vitality? Yes. Okay. You had a baby like a year ago. Five months ago. Yeah. As of like All right, three so, days ago. So this it says on it, proudly made in Australia since 1923. Probably made? No, proudly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So <laughs> both, both work. Here's Kevin, the, where was this made? No. Oh, no. Jaren. I can't eat it. Concentrated yeast extract. Ingredients. Yeast extract from yeast grown on barley and wheat. Yep. Oh, well. Salt, mineral salt. Uh, malt extract from barley, color with a U, uh, flavors, niacin, thymine, riboflavin, foliate, allergen statement contains barley and wheat. So you're going to combine gluten with gluten-free crackers. It's going to cancel each other out and be a delectable package. Oh, let's Balls. find out. I like right here. It says best before C end of tube. So you have to wait till you eat the whole tube <laughs> to know if it's still good. <laughs> you, look, you, look, you look in it. <laughs> oh, it was bad. <laughs> Joke's on you. It expired. Yeah, I can't find where it. Oh, well, I'm sure it's still fine. So it was only sent to us like a month ago. I'm sure it's fine. Still got the cap on it. We'll peel that off. All right. Oh, this looks like molasses, kind of. Okay. I don't know if I can handle this. What, is it, what does it smell like? Woo! That's interesting. <laughs> Oh. I want to smell it. It Dude, smells I'm, like baby paste. It smells like butt paste. No, it doesn't. I love the smell of butt paste. It's, you do? Yeah. It, like, it just I smells w- like an old peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I want to brush, is, my, I w- I wanna brush my teeth with it. It smells. Are you gonna do it? It You're smells gonna, salty. Even with the gluten? No. Do well, it, what get, happens if you oh. eat a little bit of gluten? That, it smells like butt paste, but in like in a negative way. Yeah, exactly. Like is butt- there a positive way to have butt <laughs> paste? Maybe I, yeah. I don't yes. think. I, maybe you're wrong. I wasn't talking about like the baby cream. I was talking about butt paste. All right, let's try this out. Grab, okay. you, grab a uh, you put that everyone in the, at the same oh. time that can eat it. I gotta put a, I gotta I gotta cleanse my palate. This is shiny. <laughs> I gotta uh oh I only have it half cracked. Yeah, let me get a wide camera ready really get quick. One for uh if we're, if we're gonna all do it. All right. Well, three of you this are gonna do it. This looks horrible. This looks like tar. Just, uh, give a little squirt there. I feel like I should be sealing my driveway with this. No, it's too Look. shiny. It's too shiny. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna put less. The future of can't. food is oh, squeeze tubes. Okay, okay. you got it. Mess. You messed up the tube. Yeah, just lick it. I'm not gonna lick that. Because then it. Time then you can't squeeze Vegemite. it. Vegemite. What um, is Vegemite? Do we know? It's. Gr- I just read. It's a. Yeah. It's cultured from a yeast. Cultured. So this yeast, is a, yeast extract. So they boil yeast and barley and then let it. From they let the cream come to the top, and this is basically so, like there's no cream. I might be completely off on this, but I'm pretty sure I read back in the day that the original Vegemite was grown on the ocean. I think on Why don't the they, ocean. Yeah, that's where sushi comes from. Like not. What does that mean? It, like it, it. It was something that was found on top of the ocean. <laughs> you better look that up to make sure. I don't know. I, I don't think that's just look right. up origins of Vegemite. Do it. Okay. All right. Is this a, is this strictly your, uh, an Australian yeah. delicacy? Yeah, this is like native to Australia. <laughs> okay, well, I am. Uh, ah, ah, no. oh! Did go. you lose your hear- your headphones? Are you still good? Left side is bad. Yeah, mine just lost the left side of mine again. Okay. All right, Vegemite was invented in Melbourne, 1922, got when it, Australian food it. manufacturer Fred Walker asked chemist C. P. Callister to create a product similar to Br- British Marmite. Oh, is Marmite from the ocean? They what? want they wanted something like British Marmite, but they wanted to rename it. Like we don't like we don't like that. We don't like those guys. Hmm. All right, you guys ready to try this? Three, two. Wait, Mar. You guys, ocean. Both, you guys yeah, all have Mar. Whoa! I think it is. I don't have anything to cleanse my palate after my. I have to Just run. Have another Tim Tam. Okay, good idea. One, two, mm. three. Okay. Oh. Hmm. It tastes good for me. That is salty. Oh, is that the cracker or the Vegemite? Well, it's the Vegemite for sure. I had a cracker before to see what it tastes I like. I shouldn't have had something super sweet before this. Oh, <laughs> that is so salty. I kind of like it, though, actually. You do? Yeah. Okay, I don't. <laughs> I'm going to have another one just to make sure. Mm-mm. Nope. Man, that's strong stuff. How do you get it down? You swallow. Ugh. How do you? It feels like, what's that taste? What's that aftertaste? It Salt. tastes like shrimp, but without the shrimp. Uh, it tastes like shoe leather, maybe? <laughs> right at the back of my throat? That's interesting. 
I could eat this. Yeah. Looks like I'm taking the tube home. Yeah, you can have that. That is, ah, <clears throat> that is so salt. Whoa, that is so salty. Wow. Ugh. That tastes like what a kidney stone feels like. Yeah, that's bad. All right, Tim Tam time. Blah. That's why the Tim Tams are there, to wash down the Vegemite. Ugh. Wow. That is unique. Ve- Vegemite. Did you want to put just a little bit on the tip of your finger and just put it on your tongue to see what it tastes like? It's like brine. No. It's pretty salty. Will it make your tongue swell up? Maybe. I think he's just saying that to get out of it. I yeah, think he's had I gluten am. before. I was going to say, he knows what happens when he eats gluten. I'm not going to eat gluten, though. I'm allergic to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's mm. the story. I mm. thought it was okay. It's just super salty. I need another Tim Tam. Oh, my gosh. That was so bad. I got I to gotta cleanse my palate with more chocolate. Oh, hey, this no is wonder a, they have kangaroos. This is a gadget podcast. All right. Oh. On to the gadgets. <laughs> um, all right. So Try Vegemite. Go for it. Jaron, tell us about the Tesla news. Well, it's it's uh it's like a trailer to news. <laughs> this yeah, is so, what we'll be talking about in the news later. Yeah. Uh Elon Musk, who uh is sane some weeks and not less than sane other weeks. Mm. Uh, sometimes you just like to pick a fight with the SEC. Yeah, that's a bad idea. Yeah. I, I think he's gonna lose that one. Uh anyway, he, he said that the model Y is going to be announced on March fourteenth. So Pi that, day. That's in two weeks. Get it? Pi Y day. I. Ha. Eh. That guy can do whatever he wants. Okay. Anyway, so the Model Y, y is supposed to be a cheaper SUV than their Model X. Yeah. It's and built, it's it's built on the platform for the Model Three, yeah, it's, right? It's built like yeah. They. He said like seventy percent of the parts are shared with the Model Three. Hmm. Um, and since they're just now uh, barely able to mass produce the Model 3, they're going to create more problems for themselves and try to mass produce a Model Y. Ah. <laughs> um, but speaking of the Model 3, they finally reached their $35,000 price. With that, how many how many factories have to close to get there? They had, no, they didn't close factories. Yeah, they closed storefronts. Oh, yeah. So they're they're doing online sales only now. <clears throat> and they well, figure, they, they they figure showed, there's enough out there that people can go see one somewhere if they want to. Well, what they they showed that like seventy plus percent of their sales were already from online. Yeah, and the the downside to this is you can't test drive it now. Uh, but the response is, well, you can drive it as much as you want for a week, and if you don't like it, you can return it. So they just upped their return policy. Well, yes and no. The from what what I read was the the test drive is basically a twenty five hundred dollar refundable down payment. Oh. And you have a week, or I think five thousand, three thousand miles, or something like that. Yeah. A thousand miles, I can't remember. Road trip. Yeah, and if you Free decide, rental. if you decide within that time, you can get all your money back. Ooh. So I mean, it's not like they're making it a sight unseen purchase. Yeah. If you don't want to. But this version of the Model Three is pared down quite a bit. It yeah. has a cloth seat interior. Uh, no murder of cows there. Uh, not as good of a sound system. Just they they really took out all the fancy features. They realized that to make a consumer level car, they actually had to make a consumer level make car. A consumer yeah. level car. Yeah. And, and of course, the the range is a lot lower than the more expensive version. It was like two, can you pay higher for that though? Two hundred and thirty miles or something like that. Yeah, two twenty, two thirty. Yeah. So hmm. it's it's interesting the what he's doing with the uh, or I should say what he's having his company do with it sharing 70% of the parts from the Model 3. That's a uh, old thing that GM started doing decades and decades ago. Where GM and High Sierra? Uh, or uh, Well, if you go... And basically, GM makes... Or or previously, or like Chevrolet, in the 90s. Right? Yeah, GM is Chevrolet, but they made like three types of motors in reality. And they just uh, would put that motor in all their cars. Yeah. They had a V8, a V6 and a four banger. And they still do that today. They still do that. Like the, like I have a Nissan Armada that's running the same engine, the same six liter engine they put in the Titan. Exactly. You know, they only make one powertrain and then just throw the body around it. Exactly. That way they can mass produce parts cheaper. Right. And it'll, it makes repairing it easier because everything's very similar from car and to the, car. And made, it kind of revolutionized the secondary market. Like it allowed you to keep these cars around yeah. without have I mean now they have the what's called the part swap so if you have an old car you can actually look up even if a lot of companies not only within themselves like Chevrolet or whatever kept the same parts but also across the industry right like, this was the alternator from Bosch that everybody used yeah 
So anyway. Yeah, I think I'm I'm pretty sure I learned in my auto classes in high school that GM was the first one to do that. Um, but it's spread to pretty much every manufacturer, right. you know, as of decades ago, of course. But uh yeah, so he's he's taking that a note from that page and it's a good you know, it's a good note to take. Um all right, so also uh say bye bye to the PlayStation Vita. Vita no longer means life. That's right. It means discontinued. Yeah. I feel like you looked that up online somewhere. Huh? No, it's Spanish. Oh. Well, Vida is Spanish, but Vita is Latin. Is then what's Latin? live in La Vita Loca? Live in the crazy life. La Vida Loca. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Wow. One of my favorite portable consoles of all time. I is, liked it. Is now gone. I liked it until it sucked. It wow, <laughs> very descriptive. <laughs> it the, didn't suck. Oh yeah, the, it just wasn't very well supported. I was going to say the games really fell off a cliff. They started out about, pretty solid. Within about two years of it yeah. coming out, the games fell off a cliff. Yeah, they did. You got like one good game a year. So, well, Sony didn't really support it after the first year. Yeah, it's really dumb. I it was a very pretty gadget though. Oh, it was. Yeah, especially the first gen that had the OLED screen. Even today, Ooh. it's a. It, it's a pretty device with a great screen. The LCD screen's good, but the OLED was better. Yeah. What was the resolution on the screen? It was like 540p or something like that. No, it was lower than that. No. I thought it was 720. It wasn't 720, that's for sure. Oh, I thought, no, I'm thinking of the Switch. I thought it was like, was it like 540 by 250 or something like that? No, no, no. Maybe I'm thinking of the DS, 3DS. Yeah, that's the DS. I'm looking it up right now. Hmm. So, but yeah, I had, I bought the, I pre-ordered the first Vita because it looked so awesome. And Me I ha- too. I kept it for like two years, and I, I enjoyed a few things on it. What was I, your favorite game on it? Probably Persona 4. Hmm. 544P. Oh, really? I was close. Oh, look at that. I was within four. I Bring still it in. have mine. Bring it in. I still have mine, and the only reason I'm holding on to it is because it has an Uncharted game on it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's really pitiful. That was a good game, though. Yeah. It, it was pretty good graphics for the time for, for such a for small a device. Yeah. yeah. It and also you, you could play Borderlands. I was going to say they it. ported Borderlands Two. Wasn't to it, it like an unrestricted version of that game? Yeah. It was the entire game? It's it was the whole. Game. Yeah, it was the full game. That's crazy that they could um, do that. Man, that, it didn't. It didn't game. run very good. But. And you, and you eh. can still play the PlayStation Four on it when you're on your home network. Yeah, the remote play. Yeah, it works uh, pretty they were doing well. Switch too. before Switch was Switch. Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of. I mean, I I wish that they were announcing something new. I'd love to see a new. Sony oh. handheld, yeah, they, but it doesn't look like they're going to go back into that market. They had good handhelds in the day. Um, so uh, we we spoke of standards earlier, like uh, video standards. Well, USB, the standard is changing again. From what? From Thunderbolt Don't. three, not right? the not the connection. The yeah. connection will stay the same. It feels the like they have multiple personality disorders. It really these, does these last few years. So so the last few years we've had three different versions of the same usb come out <laughs> you've had usb what they call U- usb 3 i believe was what uh one usb 3 super speed 10 is what they're calling it now which is 10 gigabit throughput mm. usb super speed 20 which came out uh about a year and a half ago and now they have announced today usb 4 they well no 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 before that just two weeks ago they announced usb 3.2 oh yeah 3.2 that's right yeah and 3.2 two by two to replace 3.1, which was the exact same thing as 3.2. And, uh, oh, yeah, and don't forget Thunderbolt through a USB-C. Yeah, but, well, and we'll I was going to get to that, but Thunderbolt was separate. Who and, gets to name this stuff? And, until they Even gave it. Even though it used the same connector. Yeah, exactly. Who gets to name this stuff? How like confusing, space. How confusing uh, is this? This is It's a mess, honestly. Because they should have their rights revoked. And now they're so, calling it. So the notes are actually wrong because you have, have a USB space for. They're actually taking the space out. Oh, it's just USB 4. And they actually <laughs> mentioned that in the article. <laughs> it's USB, USB 4. 4 with no space. USB 4. <laughs> USB 4. <laughs> Yeah, so this one though, it's pretty it's exciting in that it's advancing as much as it is, but now it can do forty gig throughput. Forty right? gig throughput and it Ooh. will carry a video at the same time. Right. So that that could do straight up four K one forty four pretty yeah. much. Intel uh, has opened up the Thunderbolt royalties. It's royalty yeah, free they now. Kicked it over to open source. They open sourced it and so they with uh, US, USB four, uh, no space. Right. They have 40 gigabit capability per second, as well as uh, Thunderbolt 3 for the um, 
AV connection and 100 watt charging. Wow. All, all on the same cord. USB 4 That's just cool. sounds like a preposition to a sentence. You it's said like, it, you, you said keep it wrong. going. Preposition? No, US, USB 4. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. USB 4. There we go. Yes, yeah. no space. It's like, go. Before what? Go on. Before that. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's cool to see the advancement, but, man, they need to freaking corral the names There's a, and It's all one the organization types. that does it, right? It is, it's yeah. One, and they just, it seems like they're like, okay, who wants to name this? Exactly. And they draw it out of a hat, and they're like, mm, Sam. That's what it feels what? like. So yeah. Don't turn it over to the interns, guys. No, they, they probably had a naming contest through their corporate email, you know. And and, they picked it out of a hat. And uh, somebody who said USB 4... One. I, I'm surprised it didn't come down to... And it was a typo because there was no space. It's USB un- McUSB face. Yeah. That's, you know? what, we'll that's what I was it. hoping for. <laughs> USB E McUSB face. Yeah. It almost sounds like they were having like a conversation, right? It's like, oh yeah, the US before... They meant to say before Trump took office, but it's like... They got hey, cut off. That's I love that name. We're all talking about names, right? <laughs> US before. US Use before. That. US before. Uh, so yeah, that should be that standard was just barely announced though. So you're so probably should, not going to see it in in actual devices. You'll for, see it probably quarter four yeah, hardware. Yeah, the end of the year. Yeah, you'll probably see Q4 hardware to start coming with it shipped natively. Yep. And it's going to perpetuate that feeling when you want to buy something new, but you think, oh, but I need to wait until this part comes out. Yeah. Most people won't even know because it's the exact same form factor. They'll just think that it's good, and then they'll be like, wait, this isn't the f- this isn't the USB before. This isn't USB before. How am I supposed to connect it to my monitor? Because that was a big thing in the in the, in with all the other my, with all the other USB versions, you've been able to take the connector, look at it, and go, "Nope, that's not right." Yeah, <laughs> you know exactly. Well, and the, the smart people. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, the or they try, li- or they try and jam it into their phone, and it's like, no, it kind of fits. <laughs> Must push harder. Mm. You know, from micro to mini, yeah. A, B, all those had different form factors. And so to have all these, it even adds to the confusion so much more to have the same USB form factor. But have it do different have things. Di- different speeds, different, like, how do you, it's going to just totally yeah. convolute the marketplace with just knockoffs after knockoffs, you know? Yep. So we'll we'll see how long it takes to get that implemented, but uh, wait, wait, wait a minute. What are you stealing, uh, Jeffrey Kill's jokes on YouTube? Because what are you talking about? It, it feels like you say something that he has said before. Well then, well then, I don't have. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't, he don't didn't have, have it up. Pick, yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, all right. So hold on. Hold on. I'm, I'm he's, curious. He's okay. got it. Okay. I want right. to see. I want to see what he's having to say. All right. Uh, let's see. Also. Um, Kudos to SpaceX. Back to that, actually. We skipped over the story. Uh, yeah, they, they sent some people to space, finally. Yeah, yeah, they on the Dragon. No, Dragon. No, no, they didn't, they didn't they, send no. people. They docked with, oh, they docked with ISS. Yeah. Right. No, or they're they're going to. Using yeah. their Dragon... Uh, dragon engine. Capsule. Yeah, capsule. Dragon capsule. Yeah. It's got... It's got doesn't have people inside. It's got cargo, right? Yeah. That, <clears throat> that's kind of where... It, they didn't, it didn't take space uh, astronauts. But it well, didn't take space <laughs> astronauts. Space, space people. I was gonna say space people, Did but that I need to be more have, defined. Then I realized that they have a specific name that I'm probably doing them a disservice <laughs> by calling them space I people. Can't, I, I can't believe you messed up that much. Space oh, people. You, you, so you don't need the word space at all. It's still as bad as yeah. losing to me in Smash Brothers. Games. <laughs> no, Nothing know, is that bad. I know it hurts. <laughs> okay, I still think about it. Uh, anyway, but yeah, their rocket landed. They've they they said they've they have recovered sixty nine out of the last hundred or something like that. It's like fifty nine or sixty nine out of the oh, last boosters? hundred boosters. Nice. Uh, so over fifty percent have been uh, landed at their on one of their drone ships and recovered. So it's pretty impressive to see it actually. Come, as I follow this and like watch the launches and stuff, it, it, I like I, I the last one launch that I watched. I think it was the one we kind of watched on YouTube or on Slack together or whatever, but. Like seeing the two boosters land almost like the exact same That's second. Awesome. That was I thought cool. it was a mirror image of the same camera. Wait, is that the one where one blew up? Uh, yeah, that is the okay. one where one missed the platform, <laughs> yeah. but the other two, the other two did not. But anyway, so this one, uh, yeah. So they're getting their new their dragon dragon capsule, and it's currently, I believe, it's it's gaining speed. So once what's they a, get it up, once they get it up, dragging. What drag no, dragon drag on drag on? Oh. Did you steal that joke too? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but Did I guess I, it, I guess it's currently this. It's I'm currently uh, gaining speed, so it's, it's got to get to the same speed as the space station before it can dock. Oh yeah, so it's that up, makes sense. It's in it's in orbit, gaining speed as it tries to catch up to the space station. That's cool. Yeah, Elon Musk said he wants to die on Mars. 
but not on impact. <laughs> so, <laughs> can you imagine like how many people can say something like that and like actually make it actually happen? Make it happen, yeah, or at least pay for it to happen. I just want to be stuck in traffic in a car with him and just kind of like just listen to what he throw says. Throw stuff out there. Hey, look at this problem over here. What what would you do to fix that? Well, <laughs> well, I would throw a lot of money at someone who's smart. Hey, Elon, what you thinking about, buddy? So, uh, circling back to gaming a little bit, uh, the NVIDIA TI, the NVIDIA 1660 TI launched between now and the last episode. Speaking of confusing names. Yeah, there's another one. Uh, why did they call it a 1660 TI? Nobody knows but NVIDIA. Why did they do that? Because it could have been easily the 1160 TI. Yeah. I would have understood 15 because 15 is between 10 and 20. Hmm? That even makes sense. Yeah. Sixteen, sixteen, sixty. What is this leftover I, I parts? They're like, mm, we got, sh- we got to ship something. Well, it, no, it's definitely not leftover parts because it uses a Turing architecture oh yeah. okay. uh, GPU. It's it, basically the twenty series without the RTX and Tensor cores. Yeah, so it doesn't have that stuff on it. So it has all the rasterization improvements at the twenty. So they're trying to had. like kind of get at a different market. That's exactly what they're okay. doing for the people that don't want to, that refuse to, or can't afford, or don't want to, whatever the twenty series. Uh, they have the the sixteen. I guess is what they're calling it, the 16 series. But, so this has more the DLSS are, stuff? No. no. Oh, okay. It doesn't have DLSS, doesn't have ray tracing. Okay. Basically, a 1660 Ti is more powerful than a 1070 for less money. That's what it, that's a, what it boils down but to. But how much more powerful than a 1080? Uh, not quite as powerful as well, a 1080. Why not? And the cost is... The price so, of 1080 currently? No, the the starting price on the 1660 Ti is around 300 bucks. Okay. But why don't they just make the 1080 cheaper? You you would, you know, wonder. <laughs> yeah. Because I think would if you if you still because SLI is still a thing, you could buy two 1080 Ti's and have yourself, you know, gaming wise at least, you know, you'd have the the 2080 minus the rest resistant DLSS stuff. We just but went over this, Owen. Yeah. No, you won't. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's close, right? No. no. Th- this was the first <laughs> 10 minutes of the podcast. I oh. talked about how, the, at least in the games I tried. Oh, c- in the ones you tested. Yeah. Right. There's some games that scale better, like Destiny wasn't... <laughs> Destiny 2 was probably only marginally faster with one 2080 Ti versus two 1080 Ti's, like 5-ish percent, but still... You know, half I'm at three 1080 Ti's. Oh, TI, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. In, in yeah they, they don't support that anymore. In uh, instead of SLI, it's Tri T R Y T R I T L I T R Y. Yeah, Tri Bridge. Tri. You guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So those are out there now. If you want, if you don't want to deal with any of the, if you don't feel the future of RTX is very bright right now. This early on, and you want to get a new graphics card, 1660 Ti is not a bad option. And if you feel that way, get Metro. You may change your mind. That's true. Oh, I know. I, I, I want to see how good they mine. That's all I care about. That'd be a good question. Are you still mining right because now? Because it's new I architecture. <laughs> I am. So I don't know. Still crack a lacking, James. I never give up. I can't change. <laughs> you you can change if you believe in yourself. No, I can't. Your kid says that you can change, or at least I hope he'll say that. No. S- say it. Uh, so the um, continuing on with the gaming news. Um, oh, poor Bioware. Poor, poor Bioware. Are they killing something else? Well, they... Some people think they need to. They're murdering oh. <laughs> something actively. So wait, wait, wait. Who bought Lionhead Studios? This is something I've been wanting to talk about for a long time. I don't think Lionhead exists anymore. Microsoft bought it. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, a yeah. long time ago. So are they going to do anything with it? Why do they buy it if they're not going to do anything with well, it? They just put, to own the IP? They put out a few a few games and then they closed it. Is this that Anthem story? Yes. Yeah. Oh. So I've, Anthem has been out for what, like, like a week and weeks? a half yeah. now, and it. Could be doing better. <laughs> yes, it definitely could. I mean, let's so, well, compare it weird? to another launch that sucked, like like Mass Effect Andromeda. Yeah, like that one sucked really bad. An- it, another it Bioware rough. game. Yeah, <laughs> they've they've put out two uh, horrible launches, two clunkers Ooh. so far. W- 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 it's weird though because there's parts of Anthem that are super fun. Well, that's exactly how like, Mass Effect Andromeda was. The, the, sh- the shooting is great. The flying is great. Pretty much every piece of Bioware action that Bioware typically hasn't been strong in is great. But then there's other parts that crash your PlayStation. And then, the, but the, That's a different story, the, but yeah. The, the story isn't that great, which is what Bioware typically is strong in. Right, which is weird. Yeah. And, then, the, and the, that's super disappointing. The, the presentation is is good... But buggy 
It's it's yeah. quite buggy. And loading screens everywhere. Loading screens everywhere and quite uh, resource intensive. Isn't yeah. that what happened with Mass Effect? It is actually. Yeah. The uh, so they launched, learned nothing. It, yeah, it launched quite buggy and it mm. launched with uh, a lot of other issues uh, with with it, but. Mass Effect redeemed, in my eyes, it redeemed itself because they fixed some of the bigger bugs, which they still have some they didn't fix, like Jaren's issue he had with uh, <laughs> the tram crashing his system because it, it ramps yeah. up the GPU too hard, too fast. But Mass Effect Andromeda did have a really cool story, I thought. And the graphics are pretty. And the well, graphics were pretty good, yeah. The same with Anthem. Jeffrey Kale's saying the Anthem is already 10% off. Is that normal for it to no, drop No, not, not this that soon. That's yeah, the thing. That's, that's, a, that's a red flag right there. It's If it's if a game is on sale a week later, yeah. It means the, the, the devs and the publishers are like, crap, we need people to buy this game. Yeah. We'll so, fix it later. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what was that look, Owen? Can you do that look one more time? No. Oh wow! <laughs> so <laughs> He's as, in tech. as bad as that launch is, uh, stories today are reporting that it's crashing people's PlayStations. Yep. Like completely shutting the power off, and in some cases, it's bricking people's PlayStations. Ooh, how? Okay, that's a that's a game killer right there. How? Yeah. How can software do that? Well, it, my guess is it's doing something similar to what happened to my PC. I think it's trying to overdraw on power. And it's right, a short. game can it, do that. Uh, shouldn't that be a part of the shouldn't hardware? Be, shouldn't be possible on consoles. Yeah, but that's the only thing I can think of because the PlayStation thinks that you completely pulled out the power. Because when you turn it back on, it it thinks that you pulled the power, and this error message comes up like, "Does it do did, the scan disk?" Yeah, it does oh, the scan disk, and it could man. be, and it could be an error. That could be a design flaw with PlayStation as well, not having the failsafe in there. For that kind of power I mean, drop to be a, to see it as a power loss would, like that should I would be a failure on the hardware. Normally, as well. normally I would agree with you, but no other games had this problem yeah, ever. True. Yeah, and the PlayStation Four is like five years old. Yeah, now. yeah. So, and to me, if I was like a if I was a troll working for like somebody like Microsoft or Nintendo, I mean, how neat would that be that I can shut off people's devices, make a game, spend a lot in marketing, and shut down a lot of PlayStations? Ma, ma, yeah. ma. Oh, and they're like, I'm not buying that again. Get myself an Xbox. That's right. Yep. So maybe don't buy that game right now, especially yeah. on PlayStation. Yeah, really wait, perhaps. And this is the same thing I said when it launched, uh, in, or right before it launched in the last episode. Jaren and I both played the betas, and it's definitely a wait for. Yeah. Wait for them to fix it. And what, what sucks about this type of game is they have to keep supporting it. But it's, if people aren't going to buy it, then they can't keep supporting it. They're dropping these, more money in yeah, the black hole. Exactly. Games like this are kind of like a bucket with a hole in the bottom. You have to be able to fill the bucket up faster than the hole is leaking. While patching the hole at the same time. Uh, no, the <laughs> hole is always going to be there because you always have to keep the servers up. You always have to update the game. And if you're spending money on that but not bringing in more money than what you're spending on server upkeep and game updates then you obviously yeah. got a product that is failing. Mm. And so Anthem th honestly has launched so poorly that it would not surprise me if they're straight up losing money on this game, not including all the dev fees to begin with. So they either have to completely pull the plug and refund players, which I don't think they're going to do, or they're going to have to put a whole lot more money in it and hopefully yeah. get more players. And if they get more players down the road, because... People that buy it down the road, they're not going to pay sixty bucks. No, so they'll pay. They'll be paying a lot less. They need to figure out ways to keep earning money because they're going to be selling it at much cheaper rate later on. Well, and here's the, the biggest problem, if you ask me, is I buy Bioware games for the story, nine yeah. times out of ten. And if you're telling me that, and I'll overlook gameplay problems if the story's good enough. Honestly, that's I'm just a big sucker for a good story. But if you're telling me that the game is full of bugs. And a lot of like quality of life issues with the loading screens and things like that. And it doesn't have a good story. There's no way I'm buying this game, even when it's cheap. You know? Yeah. It's it's a real problem. And it sucks because Bioware used to be like one of the kings of uh, devs. You know? They they went probably 15 years without putting out a bad game. Ooh, how That's a good have, run. Oh, how the if, mighty have fallen. If you, look, if you look at Bioware from the Xbox, original Xbox days... Up to Dragon Age Inquisition. Inquisition. I don't think they had a stinker in the bunch. And the weird thing about Dragon Age Inquisition is it used the Frostbite engine. Yeah. So how did they make it work so well there and then yeah. miss the boat so hard on these last two? I, I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense. Because, yeah, the ex original Xbox, you started with Knights of the Old Republic. That's the first Bioware game I played. 
That game's fantastic. Everything they made up until Andromeda, which is gold. Ooh, they yeah. made Shattered Steel, Baldur's Gate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Neverwinter Never Nights. Nights. Jade Baldur's Empire, Mass Effect. Baldur's okay. Gate was a great game. Yeah. Now, Jade Empire almost didn't do that well. It, it For some reason, it just didn't click very well, but uh, it still far and away exceeded anything that's been done with uh, Andromeda and... What's the other one? Anthem. I wonder if EA anticipated this and purposely released Apex Legends. I've thought about before. that. Yeah, because this way at least they balance out in the news. You yeah. know what I mean? Like their shareholders are like, well, yeah, Anthem sucked, but look at Apex Legends. 50 million players within a month. Within a month? Yeah. That is so that's, fast. That's gold. So Fortnite in the first year got 200, pl- 200 million players, but... To do, they didn't do fifty million in their first month. That's for dang sure. No, they did not. So, and I hope, I really hope that respawn keeps uh, or moves quickly to update that game with new content because it it would be a shame if it got sidelined because of slow updates. Well, respawn puts out good stuff, and because it's respawn, I am super excited for this new Jedi Fallen yeah. Order. Yeah. Uh, that they're supposed to announce it on April 13th at the Star Wars celebration. Oh, cool. Yeah. And they're going to show off more of the game. And it's Respawn. And I'm super excited. And I already said this twice now. That's all <laughs> of the news I have. Why is Star Wars I, celebration April 14th or 13th? I don't know. It should I thought it would be on May 4th. I know, right? Right? It of feels that, like a missed opportunity there. That stupid uh, May made up holiday, May the 4th. May the fourth hey, be. Of all, the, mu- of all the made-up holidays, like Donut Day and Taco Day, whatever, this is the best one. I guess. What yeah. days did you say it was? 14th and 15th? April 13th. Oh, it's because it's a weekend. That's a Saturday and a Sunday. I guarantee that's why. But regardless. May the 4th is a Thursday. It's going to be awesome. Oh, maybe, yeah. I hope. Who does anything on a Thursday? Not but me. The, the thing about Fallen Order, though, it's they hired a whole new team in Respawn. Oh, nice. Well, so, oh, maybe not so nice. Yeah. So Sorry. The, the team that worked on Titanfall the, and Apex are not yeah. working on the, Fallen Order. I like expansion. I like new jobs. But yeah. it, if it's not the same team with the same quality, then we got problems. Are you saying they respawned a new team? Oh. They just spawned a new team. Yeah. Oh. You were so close, James. <laughs> you were James. so close, man. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. But um, the uh, director of God of War 3 is directing it. So What? Yeah. Really? Uh-huh. I didn't know that. Not not the not the recent one. No, God of War oh, 3. Oh, yeah. okay. That makes more sense. Yeah. I also read an article. It was just a blurb, but said Chris Avalone is, was helping with it as well. Who's that? Chris Avalone was... Uh, he's made or at least helped make quite a few games in the last like 15 years, but he's the guy that did like Deus Ex. Oh, is he the story guy? Yeah, the story guy. Oh, good. Yeah. He's also working on a game I'm really looking forward to that uh, doesn't have a release date, but it's supposed to release sometime this year called uh, Dying Light 2. Mm. Oh, man, the first Dying Light was a lot of fun. So hopefully the second one is also great. I always get Dying Light mixed up with uh, Metro Exodus. They have kind of a similar uh, like style. And going back to that Dragon Age Inquisition, I wish I could have gotten into that game. I bought it, That's and a then good I game. played like the first ten minutes. Well, I had the same problem the first time I played Borderlands, the first one. Uh-huh. I played the first area probably like four or five times until I'm like, everybody says this is a game I like, so I'm just gonna power through it. And I did it, and that game's awesome. Yeah, so should do it with the Dragon Age. Now. It's just a different style of game that I'm used to. That's yeah. one of the few games you know? I've actually beat. Dragon Age Inquisition it was great. Yeah, it was real what good. What were you doing in your life that allowed you to have the time to beat it? No, he just um, took six months to do it. I, I, I didn't have a baby then, <laughs> or if I did, it was a very, very young baby. You didn't so. have... I. Oh, interesting. Yeah. You can still play games with young babies. But. I, I played all the Dragon Age games. I beat them all. They're, they're all very good. Uh, all right. And then I think there was one more. Yes. This is really cool news. It's kind of in the rumor mill a little bit, but it's looking more plausible as the weeks go by. Uh, Owen has the story here about Microsoft working on game core yeah so they're gonna they're gonna start so some of the recent um some of the recent builds of of the new windows builds um have had they the dev team has been asking some of the beta testers to hey go download this game and see what uh see what breaks see how it works yeah see how it goes when you did it yeah Uh, we want to know the feedback we want to know bugs glitches hardships like what did you have to do and these are their more tech savvy testers and so they were like hey can you try this out and uh, 
the main the main thing they're trying to find out is if they can get right now they already have what's the other core that they <clears throat> one core is what they they're building off of so the one core is what they've what they've kind of centered all their other stuff off of the surface um is that one supposed to be the the Right, right one app and it'll run on yeah. all their platforms basically the architecture says hey this is going to work anywhere yeah surface like uh xbox xbox pc, PC server yep um all this all this stuff and, and even the hololens uh, they're all built on that same foundation and so the game core um they were asked some of the builder some of the uh, testers were asked to try to install this game state of decay um, as part of the package, and you could have so, picked a better game. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, and they, you know, they wanted to see the, the, so the gate, the game, uh, the Xbox stuff comes in the, in the format called XVC. And yeah, they wanted to see if those could, if that file system would run on this core system. Yeah. Um, and then, all, but we also noticed that it did go out and update some of the other elements. They were saying in the article, some of the other elements of Windows, like it went out and tried to update the DirectX architecture oh. and stuff like that. So it is a big step. I would love this if this was the solution instead of trying to do the streaming, like from your Xbox to your PC. Which doesn't work very it, good it's still. It's kind of janky, yeah. like, you know. It's horrible. Okay. Um, but being able to yes. take a game <laughs> and like just play it on any Windows device. Yeah would be really cool. Well, and I thought about this uh, a lot, actually. I read a story about this about a week ago, and um, it's just kind of been percolating in my brain that Microsoft would make more money if they made this happen because you don't make any money on hardware sales. No. They, well, they, in the tail end of the life cycle, yeah, you do. Yeah, but for the first two-thirds of the life cycle, yeah. they're either sold at a slight lot for anywhere from a decent size loss to a slight loss to sometimes breaking even. And uh, uh, the thing with this, though, is if you could sell an Xbox game to a PC gamer, then you make straight profit off of that because you don't have to sell them hardware. You don't have to, yep. you don't have to support have it. their... It's already existing. Yeah, it's already there. It's just their PC. And so that would be... Um, but how is this different than Steam? Like, play, like getting so the game and so playing the, it on a PC so through the, Steam. The difference, I think, would be that you buy it once it's it's like the Xbox Play anywhere, right? But you, real, but for but truly on any hardware, and you give your money to Microsoft instead of Valve. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but do we want to do that at this point? Who's the good guy and who's the bad guy? They're both okay guys. Oh yeah, <laughs> really? Yeah. If I give it to Steam, is there a chance of getting Half Life Three? No. 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 Uh, no. <laughs> so the the one the, the one thing that w I would question about that though is if I'm going to run native games natively xbox games on my pc if there's a pc version of it it's a pc specific exactly. version yeah it's, it's weird. probably going to run better on that platform because it's been optimized to for that pc piece, instead for of PC. trying to em emulate an xbox on my pc right so i think f it, this would probably be only something i took advantage of with on like exclusive games yeah and like the old xbox 360 games that would right. be cool too yeah but if i mean just in general, I think it'd be a really cool idea, and I fully support something like this. Well, and pushing it through their Windows operating system allows them to change it more fluidly, mm -hmm. like to update if like to do patches more rapidly because oh, yeah. the update system's already firmly in place. Like updating the console games and stuff is always such a bear to get people to do it, to get adoption, to get to get it to happen, and then you know, and then they eventually just do okay. You can't play it till you update it, and that's like a real big pain. Whereas Windows, just everybody's just used to their computer updating. That's true. You, you know, it's already got the right mentality. Yeah, and nobody goes oh, an update. I'm not going to play or whatever. So I think it'd be cool. I think it's a cool idea. I think as we move forward to um, cross platform play as well, I think this idea is really cool as yeah. well. Yeah, I I agree. I think it would. It's, it looks like Microsoft is trying is trying to push towards basically just a Microsoft platform. Yeah, you buy it on our platform; it'll work on any of our devices. And maybe, yeah, maybe maybe they step out of the hardware game and they, they do software, right? Honestly, like, I mean, they could at that point. Yeah, um, I don't think they will. Right, but uh, it would be. It's I'm I'm pretty excited for that. I can't wait to see where that goes. Um, so uh, also. Um, Nope, no also. That's the end of gaming news. Uh, so there was a whole bunch of announcements so last week about uh, Samsung hardware. They announced their Galaxy S10 line. You had the S10e, the S10, 
and the S10 Plus. It looks pretty good. Oh, yeah. You also had S10 5G, <laughs> and you had the Galaxy Fold. They announced five different phones wow. at that event. And as, this was mobile. Was this Mobile World Congress? No, this was their own Samsung oh. unpacking event. Okay. And they also announced new Galaxy uh, earbuds for uh, like pure wireless earbuds like Jabra's. Or, Are they supposed to compete with the AirPods? Yeah, they're cheaper, actually. Okay. What's the price? 129 Ooh. Yeah. That's not that much cheaper. I was going to say, I, it's I about swear $30, I it. 20 to $20, $30 cheaper. Uh, but then they also announced a new, two new Galaxy Fit watches, uh, a, a watch and a like exercise armband kind of a thing. So they, they announced quite a bit. The show was like two hours long. They could have done it in probably 90 minutes. But anyway, that's beside the point. <laughs> um, but yeah, the all of that hardware actually looked really good, and we're starting to see some reviews trickle in. Uh, today I saw a couple of reviews for the Galaxy S10, and yesterday I saw a review for the Galaxy Buds. Oh yeah, how, how are those? So the the review I read, I think it was uh, TechCrunch reviewed them. They gave them an eight out of ten. Oh nice. They oh. said basically everything on them was really nice. They said the sound quality wasn't the best, which you don't expect for 130 bucks for the pure wireless headphones. But they said it's it definitely held its own. I mean, Samsung owns Harman Kardon and AKG, mm-hmm. and they know how to make decent headphones and decent speakers. So they said the sound quality was basically somewhere between good and great. Uh, that's but good enough. Yeah, that's what I mean. For yeah. if you're gonna go running or whatever, good not great. Yeah, and so uh, for 129 bucks, they said it's very compelling. Uh, cool. piece of kit the the s10s they look pretty good to me they have a hole punch for the camera on the front facing camera so there's no notch did you notice that they did the same thing apple did with their backgrounds for all the demo units yeah they well, make the background really dark in the corner so you can't see the notch oh <laughs> just yeah. like apple did with the top part of the screen apples is so much more blatant though because oh, they true. have so they have a picture of a planet but you only see like half of the circle <laughs> and it barely is like one pixel below where the notch yeah. is. And so it goes right past the notch just barely and oh, it's tricky. But uh, yeah, the, I don't think the notch looks too bad on us. Not in the notch, the hole punch. I think it, I, I played with one at Best Buy and it seemed all right. It's To me, it's better than a notch. But I mean, still, still not as good as all screen. Yeah, yeah. Which OnePlus is about to debut a phone that's full screen with a little camera that slides up. Yeah, the, the top. Oh, like a little like uh, I'm I'm a little like I'm coming to the party. Basically, yep. yeah, oh, pops nice. like a turtle turtle head. Oh. Uh, Vivo did that already last year. Yeah, I'm holding out. I'm holding out for the Pixel Four. I can't. I, I just don't like the slowness of the updates that they get. Oh, tell me yeah. about it. You know. And Ugh. Pixel still has a superior camera than what Samsung has. Not by much. I mean, we're talking marginally better. The, the, the Pixel, night the, side. The Pixel besides thing. the night sight. The night yeah. sight mode is amazing on the Pixel. Yeah, the night yeah. mode is way better on Pixel than pretty much anything else on the market besides yeah. the, actually, no, the uh, Huawei P20 has a really good night mode, too. And I have to give it to Samsung. They are still including a headphone jack. Yep. Kudos oh. to them. Yeah. I might do that. I might buy that. <laughs> if the Pixel 4 has no headphone jack, I don't know if I can Of course do it. it's I not can. going to have it. So yeah. the, the S10's got the Snapdragon 855, which is the latest mobile CPU, GPU from Qualcomm. They're kind of the industry standard for Android phones. So it's like an Apple CPU, but two years old. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sad, but true. But true. Uh, and it's got, so it has varying battery sizes depending on the size you want. The 5E is the smallest. Yeah, or the, I mean, the like 10E. The yeah, ones that are kind of big, ones that are really big. Mm, mm, mm. The S10 Plus has a 4,100 milliamp hour battery. That's, oh, that's, cool. that's really big. Yeah. Um, and then they've updated their Samsung TouchWiz. It's no longer called TouchWiz. It's called Samsung One UI. Is that because right? It sucks yeah. Because they had to do a name change oh, to get away from it. Yeah, because that's how bad TouchWiz mm-hmm. was. It looks okay, though. But this looks like a huge update. I, I would still prefer Google's iteration of Android. Um, but yeah, the One UI looks pretty good. Yeah. And uh, what else was there? The fingerprint sensor in oh, the yeah. display. Fingerprint sensor in the display, and it's not optical like the ones you've seen from some of the Chinese manufacturers. It's a new one that's uh, ultrasonic. So it uses sound waves. So it's like a man bat. Yes. It goes, so your it goes, finger can be wet and it'll still work, which is oh, cool. Yeah. However, if your screen is scratched too much, it won't work. Mm. Well, and you need, and you'd, bounce you'd have to scratches. really, you'd have to really scratch that screen yeah, up though. If right. you, if you go watch a Jerry rig, everything <laughs> YouTube video on this, the teardown, no, the stress test of the galaxy S 10, 
Uh, he scratches it first with like surface scratches way more than you'd normally expect. And it still worked, but then he grabbed one of his really hard picks and gouged it. And then it stopped working. Cause the, it probably needs like the glass to transmit. The I'm sound, sure it does. Yeah. Like even glass. I I've read mixed reports on this. Some people say it works great. Other people say it's not that great. Oh, no, really? Well as reliability. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. If it gets scratched, you just have to go in and redo your fingerprint to include the scratch and then you're good. <laughs> right? Just like, I wonder uh, if that would work. Just, Cause it just, it. it just is like, Oh, he just, he has a scar on his thumb now. One cool thing about it though, is it does register, uh, whether the blood is moving through your thumb. Oh, wow. Why does it need to do that? So that dead it, people? That's if they ever cut your thumb off and used it to try to use it to unlock your phone, it won't unlock it. We live in such a weird freaking world. This is like a James Bond thing. Wow. So, yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, I was hoping I might be able to finagle one uh, through work, but it doesn't look like that. Yeah. So Wait, wait. Well, so, if your phone breaks, they have to get you a new one, though. So Yeah, they'll probably get me one older than the one I already have. Oh, touche. <laughs> okay. Enzo's <laughs> asking what happens if uh, there's a screen protector on it. Yes, so they did talk about that, actually. Um, so the problem with screen protectors right now is most of them for the curved edges phones don't do a complete adhesion yeah. to the screen. Mm -hmm. It leaves air bubbles. But basically, well, that's what I noticed with my uh, my watch. Yeah, you have like, a, like it doesn't grip the whole screen. It doesn't yeah. curve. With yeah, it. and so... Basically, from what I've read, they're saying that uh, the like the InvisiShield style, the the plastic ones work fine because mm. they adhere completely completely to the screen. Any of them that leaves any air bubble, any air gap between, will not work. So the only one that I can think of off the top of my head, and, and I guess this was uh, Samsung said that it does work, is there's a company out there called White Dome that does the kind of screen protector where you put the glue on the screen and then put the screen protector over the glue and use a UV light to cure it. That one will still work. Hmm. But pretty much... You uh, never remove that screen. Yeah, protector. that's pretty neat. Yeah, it's you can remove it with a heat gun, oh. but uh, it's still kind of a pain in the butt. So, yeah, that is one of the downsides of the uh, in-screen thumbprint reader that they're using. So, hmm. But... Cool, I don't new, know. cool new technology. It though. is, yeah. The sonic, the ultrasonic uh, detection. It's really neat to see the technology moving forward. Obviously, I'm that much closer to being Batman. And then, uh, yes, with his with his ultrasonic fingerprint reader. Yep, just, I was just talking like about the bat part, Sweet. but yep, that's cool. <laughs> uh, speaking of of bats, folding phones are yeah. going to be the next big thing, like bat wings. You get it? Is it, oh, is it true that, that yeah. there's an one. Apple Thank one you. in the pipeline, an uh, Apple folding uh, phone, or not did a, I just not fall for like soon. a clickbait thing? They had a patent. Yeah. So um, who knows if it's ever going to happen. I honestly don't. I don't know. I'm, it might, but I could see them doing a foldable iPad That'd before be cool. before do, an iPhone. I do wish that this did fold. Wouldn't that be cool if it folded? That'd be neat. Yeah, I agree. Uh, but yeah, so Huawei... And um, a couple other companies, TCL showed off. Oppo as well. Oppo is another one. They showed off foldable uh, cell phones at uh, Mobile World Congress this last week. And Samsung showed theirs off at the Samsung Unpacked event. Is the it cool Galaxy enough to Fold. get though? Like, no, not first gen. No yeah, way. Yeah, like I just, I so, still don't see the use case for a foldable phone. So it's interesting. Um, that Portability. The, I already ha what do you mean? So I think Huawei's has the best use case. It has the personally. best implementation, if you ask me, because yeah. it folds, and I didn't think I'd ever be saying this because I'm afraid of having that much screen exposed, but it folds the screen around the back. Okay. okay. Whereas with your Samsung Fold, it folds it in the middle like a book. Yeah, right. So the thing is, is with the technology right now that, that they have to produce OLED screens, you can't produce a screen that creases. It folds completely flat. Right. It has to curve. It has to basically. curve, yeah. Right. And so with the Samsung Gold or Fold, you have a, a basically a gap. Like a teardrop shape. Yeah, if you were to look at the profile of the device, it looks like a teardrop. And with, uh, was it Huawei, the one mm -hmm. that you liked? Yeah. It, it folds around the back, so it actually folds flat because... The uh, display curves around the spine right. uh, behind it. So with a Huawei, you have just a normal phone since you have a full screen on the one side. And then if you want a tablet, you just fold it out. You got a huge old tablet phone there. And right now, it doesn't make much sense because, as Tony said, it's plastic on the front and back. Yeah, that's the problem. So it's easily scratchable. Wobbly. Like, 
No, like the screen is plastic and not uh, glass, so it's you can easily scratch it, yeah. right, um, easily damage it. However, I, I read something that um, Corning, who makes Gorilla Glass, mm-hmm. they're they're on it. They're uh, oh really? Yeah, they they have glass that actually does fold enough for the Huawei style. Really? Yeah, phone. Um, there's. They don't think it's going to be out for another two or three years, though. Oh. Well, so, I mean, that's when they might actually be somewhat affordable. Right. Yeah. Because all of these phones are starting at around $2,000. Uh, what happens if instead of, like, a glass case, why can't they just do, like, silicone or something like that? Something that, like, transfers haptic feedback better? Silicone kind of feels like leather. Imagine putting your Well, like, can't you give it, like, leather. some kind of, like, a gloss finish or something? Uh, I don't know. Because to me, it almost sounds like we need to redefine what glass is if it doesn't like snap when you fold it in half. I, I'm no well, silicone that's... expert, but I've seen silicone in two states. The hard state, like on a computer chip, and like the... Uh... Well, that's silicon. Oh, okay. <laughs> I told you I wasn't an expert. <laughs> <laughs> What's this you're looking at right here, James? Is this, this real is or a, is this just a know. fake mock I wanted to throw this at you guys. Let well, see if so... Uh... This Mo- is the new Motorola um, Razor. Razor. Yeah, we talked about this. This so, is the one use case that we thought would be. Yeah, Motor- Motorola's talked about this before. I don't think. I don't. That's I don't just think a concept. It. Yeah, this is a concept. Yeah. Um, because they haven't announced anything for sure, other than they did already announce a price. I think they said it'd be about fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah. Oh, geez. Which is still five hundred dollars cheaper than everyone else. Somebody was watching the Apple keynote and they're like, "How much did they sell the new Apple iPads for?" Yeah, yeah. Let's go with that. Yeah. The higher end price model. More, more, more perfect. More. That'll get us out of this and, hole. And the problem with these foldable phones right now with the plastic is there's a crease in the middle. Yeah. Even even though they're not like folding flat, you still see a wave yeah. it's because, on the middle. It's because of physics where yeah. you have more material there than you need to make the bend. Exactly. You know, So when you fold it flat, it's not going to be the same. Yeah. I, I personally, one of my favorite parts of my body is where my finger folds and you know you get the little extra skin. Just lets me know. I got, what they got could, a little bit more. What they could do is have, have on one side, have the glass kind of slide, slide underneath in. it. Yeah, yeah, they, they could, could do, do that. that. Why weren't you an engineer, dude? I don't know. I still think Lazy. the best use case so far has been that table that rolls the TV up inside of it. That is That's cool pretty from much LG. Been, yeah. yeah, that one That one. I'm, that one. I'm. made me go, oh, okay, folding folding it's LEDs a, can be a... It's just a box. And, and it just then rolls the TV it, up like a tube inside. Inside it, yeah. You watch. We're finally going to get to the point where it starts to look natural. And then we're going to go with holograms. And all these engineers that we're designing are going to be like, dang it. Ah, so close. Wasted my life. Seriously. So, But the bend, though. That bend, though. The bend. Uh, I think that's, oh, uh, we talked about the Mate X. Did we talk about, no, yeah, we talked about the Mate X. Uh, Samsung has ultra fast phone memory. This is, so this is big. It's, it's a new flash memory. Designed specifically for mobile devices. It's a 512 gigabyte module, but the big deal here is it can read speeds up to 2100 megabytes per second. That is fast. That is way fast. So the standard SSD over SATA, that, that's like around 500 megabytes a second. So yep. This is four times faster than a standard SSD in, in your laptop. What's the write speeds on it? Uh, write speed is 1000. No, 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 that's not right. What would you use this for? Write speed is 410 well, megabytes that's a per second. a lot less. That's versus 260. It's still fast, but... Yeah. But you're not going to be writing to your phone unless you're shooting 4K video I was going to say, if 60. you're shooting 4K 60 HDR, you're going to probably need every bit of that bandwidth. Well, you, you can... Pretty close. You can shoot 4K 60 in the current iPhones. I'm not sure about HDR, but... Yeah. Hmm. So can you on the iPad, too. Well, and this is where the rubber meets the road for the user interface. Like, when you read... How fast you read and write is really what you feel. At the as the end user, when you open yeah. an app, when you browse, when it's you true. save, when you download, you you feel that read write speed. This, regardless of how much processor you have and like what what it can do as far as performance goes, the most the most basic using fu- user function is how fast does it go? And does if, it we, if it can access that <clears throat> stuff on the memory faster, it doesn't matter what your experience is like. You have, think it's fast. Yeah, you'd be like it's screaming. Isn't it like the best thing when you get a new phone, like a good upgrade? And then you like you open up an app and it's so fast and it opens up like. Bling. Oh, I so mean, the, imagine the difference going from a spinning uh, platter drive it was to huge. solid state. It's it like huge. You, most people. I mean, the lay person that's not a computer person was like, "Holy crap, this feels." Yeah. Wait, even they could tell. Not being a hardware nerd or anything, they could tell that that that, that it was better. 
Well, yeah, when yeah. you when you go from taking three minutes to boot to under a minute, yep. you know, now you don't have time to go make a sandwich. And so I think that's where this memory will come in. I hope that it, I mean, I hope it's not Samsung specific, right? It's not just well, Samsung devices. produces it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But they'll, they'll sell They it. have the key in the lock to a lot of things. Yeah. Like they make Blu-ray. They also. No, um, Sony does. Oh, right. That's right. I got Samsung and Sony mixed up. But Samsung makes right, Samsung is the largest manufacturer of flash memory on yeah, the planet. That's right. Yeah. So they make they make the flash in the flash memory in your probably in your GPUs. I know in Nvidia's most of them are either Samsung or Micron. They make the memory that's in almost all your phones. I have one of their uh, NVMe drives and yep. I love it. They make a buttload of different SSD and NVMe's. Uh, they make a lot of RAM, regular RAM. Yeah, they 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 make a lot of stuff. So, all right. Well, uh, yeah, I think we're done then. Um, we talked about everything. Look at that. Look at that. Way to go. If you guys want to talk to us, check us out on our website, thegadgetspot.net, or just gadgetspot.net. Gadgetspot.net. Or check us out on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, wherever you get your uh, uh, stuff from. Google Podcasts. Apparently yeah. now on YouTube. Hold on. Um, Mitchell on chat says, which one of you guys are super scared of snakes? We can uh, ignore that. That would be James. I think it's him. That's yeah. him. That's uh-huh. him. That's the one. I told him about that. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why would it, you tell him it, that? He thought it was quite funny. What part? What? Why does he need to know that? I showed him that. I showed it. So we... Do you remember... Nope. How, how long ago was it that we put a dead snake you right on now, your doorstep, Jaron? It was a few months ago. So I actually took video of James doing that, <laughs> besides your ring video that oh, was you with a video you mm-hmm. haven't showed us? Yeah, I have, I have some video of him coming up and going, oh! <laughs> and then running back and to his car. And then running all the way down the driveway to the back of his car to the trunk in the street to make sure that he had enough distance. Anyway... You made me drop my soda pop. That's I, right. Uh, you did drop your soda. You were not happy about pretty sure, that. Pretty sure I showed <laughs> no, that video. No, I wasn't. <laughs> pretty sure I showed that video to them, and uh, they thought it was quite funny. Why do you keep posting pictures of snakes on I our Slack channel? I didn't. I haven't done that Who, for months. I'm yeah, but to get, you have done that. I'm trying to get off your band list. You already, sh- you already shushed me. My for th- band list? Yeah, you already shushed uh, me for 30 days. List. Yeah, I did. So, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> What, you, what were you looking up on your phone? I was trying to find the video, but Ring deleted it. Oh, oh dang, dang it. it. Yeah. I had to cancel that like two days after my wife and I had our ring because I walked into my living room like butt naked. Why do you have a ring on the inside? I had three of the in- indoor ring cameras. Mm. So why apparently did... I just want to know when people break into my house. I want to know when they're on the inside. So why did you cancel it, though? I don't want people to know I'm naked. Oh. Did you, you uh, give other people the username and password so they could see your videos and stuff? Actually, to tell you <laughs> okay, the truth, cool. something that I've been dabbling with uh-huh. is I have an extra wise uh, camera. Voyeur, huh? Well, no. Here, yeah, no. Oh. <laughs> not exactly. I kind of want to put it somewhere and then give it out to our listeners. Okay. Like, you know that that is like inside straight. inside my house. No, I'm, it's not going to be inside my house. Oh. Like a bird cam. Yeah, like Just a bird a, cam. Oh, okay, like, okay. Some kind of like... <laughs> If say, you can't sleep at night, here, turn on the camera. We're getting into mm-hmm. sketchy territory. No. <laughs> it, it could bring in more <laughs> listeners. Do it, James. Yeah, like they did with I'm that trying. nest. The nest cam down in Salt Lake for the uh, Peregrine Falcons. So many people tuned into that eventually. It's just a camera looking at a nest. Really? Yeah. It was was it a nest thing. camera looking at a nest? Because that's straight. Ooh, that would have been that that, a missed marketing right yeah. there. That's straight out of uh, Silicon Valley. That yeah. was a gag in a so couple funny. of their episodes. Yeah. With the eagle nest. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so if you guys have any suggestions James, as to where... for yeah. your body for the good of the gadgets. I already right? did, and it got us nothing. Yeah. Good try. Yeah. High yeah. five. If, good try. If you guys have any suggestions on where to put the wise cam, write to us. Yeah, go to the... Go to gadgetspot.net, or I think we own the gadgetspot.net, too, and I have it as forwarding. Oh, good. I'm have, good for it. Have now. another Tim Tam. Okay. I'm good. That's have good. another Tim okay, Tam. I'll have another. I'm gonna have one too. You gotta I have it. one for me. I, I gotta eat them. We gotta we gotta have one for Jaren. Yep. yep. All right. Uh, uh, okay. Well, thanks for listening, and um, make sure to write us letters. Yeah. Write us an email if you have any questions, and give us a review on iTunes. It, we appreciate cool. it. Yeah. It helps us. Yeah. All right. Oh, and take us out. Hey. We hope you care. <laughs>